So in this video, we're going to be getting an AI to play New Super Mario Bros Wii. But unlike some of my past videos, which have given the AI the nice easy levels of World 1, today we're going to be jumping straight to World 8-7, famously known for its rapid bone coaster ride through a perilous sea of lava. This level is absolutely brutal, even for humans, so our AI is really going to be pushed to its limits. In our AI's toolkit, there are eight different actions, including the normal various combinations of standing, running and jumping in all different directions. In World 8-7 though, conventional gameplay takes a backseat, because it's not about the AI moving through the level, it's about the level moving the AI, which is very different from your traditional platform game. That idea brings us nicely to how this AI will learn. You see, AIs normally need to be given some idea of what they're meant to be doing, and that's where rewards come in. AIs will do anything for rewards, meaning by setting them accordingly, the AI's uncontrollable craving will guide it towards the behavior we want, so long as we set it right. In almost any Mario Bros game, rewards are pretty simple. The more it goes to the right, the more rewards it gets. While this level is no exception, it is one of the only levels where running to the right won't get you to the finish any faster. While rewarding our AI for its actions in New Super Mario Bros is fairly simple, actually implementing this in code is a bit tricky. I have to look through the game's memory to find things we need, such as the player's coordinates, but this is a bit like hunting for a needle in a haystack in the dark with a million tons of hay. You see, the game's internal memory doesn't conveniently display a list of all of the coordinates and things we need. Instead, I have to embark on a bit of a journey to uncover this valuable information. To do this, I scan every single memory value in the game, then detect how they change as I move in the game. For example, if I move to the right, I know that Mario's X coordinate should have increased, so I can filter the list of memory addresses using that information. If I do this simple process enough times, I'm able to eventually find the addresses that I need. To give our AI the best chance of succeeding, I actually had to find many different values, including the current X coordinate, the current Y coordinate, since this level actually contains some vertical sections, the number of lives we have so that I can check when we die, whether or not Mario has a power up such as the propeller so we can see when we lose that ability, whether he's currently in small or large form for the same reason, and also whether or not we've actually completed the level so I know when to stop. While finding these values can sometimes be tricky, as it can require some real creativity to narrow down the list of millions of memory values down to just a handful. Using these addresses, I'm able to write some code which basically rewards the AI for progressing through the level and punishes it when it gets hit by lava or dies. If you like what I do here and want to help support the channel, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment about what you think. While rewards are indeed a critical part of our AI's learning process, the real interesting part lies in how the AI perceives and reacts to the game world. Instead of being spoon-fed information about Mario's location using those memory addresses, our AI is only given one thing, the raw visual data from the game's pixels, just like what you might see when you play. Now here's where it gets even more intriguing though. To prevent our AI from simply memorizing patterns and taking the easy route, we introduce an element of randomness, occasionally forcing the AI to make decisions purely based on random actions. It's like throwing a bit of a curveball at the AI and pushing it into uncharted territory where it has no experience to rely on, and also forcing it to learn potentially better strategies. But anyway, it's about time we get into the training of this AI. After a single hour of training, although the AI has cracked the crucial code that it needs to go to the right, that's about all, as it commonly fails to even board the roller coaster. And when it does, it just decides to take a delightful dive into the lava. The AI knows it's being rewarded for going to the right, but hasn't quite figured out yet that waiting for the roller coaster is probably the best way to do that. After two hours, this is even more clear with the AI almost perfecting the leap into lava currently believing that the best way to maximize its reward is just to leap as far as possible to grab up as much reward as it can before its inevitable demise. After four hours though, the AI has made some tremendous progress, finally realizing that patience is pretty key to its success. Despite this though, the AI often still just jumps into the lava. The reason for this is simply the AI trying to decide between a big reward now or more reward later. If it takes a big leap to its death, it actually gets a lot of reward for moving to the right so quickly, but it gives up the chance to earn any more reward later on because, you know, it's dead. If, however, it waits for the roller coaster to move, it doesn't get much to start with, but can rack up a huge reward once the thing gets going. It's a bit like being offered one cookie now or two cookies if you're able to wait an hour. 
Throughout this section of training, you can really see the AI wrestling with this decision, just as a human might do. After six hours, the AI starts to get far better at riding the roller coaster, and hence trusts that waiting for the roller coaster to move will have the bigger payoff. One thing we can see though is that the AI starts doing some weird stuff on the parts of the level that are actually on normal ground. This is because at this point, a huge amount of its training is being done on the roller coaster, and it begins to find it hard to move around normally, especially on the vertical sections, since the beginning of the level doesn't really prepare it for this. Despite some odd behaviour though, the AI is able to make it past the halfway mark of this level, which is looking pretty good since this level is really not easy. After 8 hours of training, the AI is starting to look really strong, making it past the halfway mark almost every time and even having a solid crack at the second half of the level. If you're wondering how the AI works, it basically tries to predict how much reward it's going to get by taking any of its given actions. You can see the AI's prediction in the top left of the screen, which gives you an idea of how much confidence the AI has in its ability. One slight oversight I made when designing this was how much reward to give the AI. The AI uses a neural network, which tends to perform best when the values it predicts are between around minus 10 and 10. However, as you've probably seen, the AI's predictions are a lot higher than this. This can make learning a little unstable, so I guess that's my bad. I really underestimated how fast the roller coaster moves, as when it's at full speed, it moves insanely fast compared to a normal running speed. So without further ado, here is the final version of this AI, trained for a total of 10 hours. After all this training, the AI is finally able to beat this infamous level with no trouble at all. That said, the AI hadn't quite perfected things yet, since it did still take a few hits along the way, but it was definitely good enough to consistently get that victory. Many of you may have noticed that I recently got a new icon for my channel. My previous one was actually a picture of a real robot called Pepper, however this wasn't really mine so I got an AI to whip up a fresh version just for me, so be sure to let me know what you think. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out my other videos like an AI learning to drive a Lamborghini. I hope this video made your day just a little bit better and I hope to see you again in the next one.